They're that's, a bigot. That's it. They're a bigot. No, I'm just kind of a bigot, though. There's no kind of bigot. It's it's black or white. You either are a bigot or not. Well, on that note, we're going to decide today if Fallout 76 is a pandering garbage or an exciting new direction for the franchise. Do we even know what it is yet? We actually don't, but we'll get we'll dive deep into some Fallout lore and pass judgment anyway and find the answer to that and many more questions on today's never-changing bowl of dude soup. Welcome. I did, thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't think we have access to. We got to do music cues for that, and I don't even know what that song is anymore. Uh oh. Whoops. Wow. Hey, I mean, you could do it like, uh, what is it, Attack of the Show style, remember? They do, the, they, do the, they do a little intro, and they're like, well, graphics come oh, in. Oh, like a little head. The it's old called a header. One, yeah. It's called a header. The header, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I absolutely stole that when we did the old uh, Inside Game and stuff. Oh, I'm sure, mm -hmm. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. It was great. What, the song, or just the idea? No, no, the it? idea. It was like a little, was a little drum and bass, like kick drum thing, and then it was always like, you do your three headlines, and you're like, oh, today, blah, blah, blah. And then you do your intro, like, I absolutely stole it. Oh, that's what everybody, they stole it. That's what everybody has for every new show. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get them, you gotta hook them early, that YouTube audience. You gotta last one. So we got you. Mm. Uh, and hopefully you stick around. Uh, today's podcast is sponsored by, are you getting it oh, away from the electric? see what you're... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I can scoot it out there. Uh, today's podcast is sponsored by three sponsors. We got Audible, Beachbody, and Dollar Shave Club. You can get a free audio book with a 30-day free trial by going to audible.com slash dudesoup or text dudesoup to 500-500. You can get a special free trial membership to Beachbody On Demand when you text dude to 303030. 30. And you can get the Dollar Shave Club Daily Essential Starter Set for just $5 at dollarshaveclub.com slash dude. I'll hear more about all of those offers later. First, we gotta hear about some Fallout. And I'm gonna put on my favorite Fallout in the background here. Fallout 2. Is. That's right, Fallout 2. Man, when the franchise was good, am I right? I never played <laughs> You're right. I find me for that. <laughs> nope. Please. Only, I only played 3, New Vegas, and 4. I did it myself. I played Sorry. Fallout 1 and 2. Oh. You, you played New Vegas, so that's pretty close to 2, style, stylistically. Gotcha. I just, I know the, the top-down <laughs> view <laughs> thing, the isometric. I don't even know what's going on. A friend on. of mine showed it to me, and this is when Unreal 99, Unreal Tournament 99 was like the fun thing to play. He's like, you, you, if you like this, you check out Fallout. And he showed me two seconds and went, Nah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, that looks boring. Yeah, yeah your friend was, he's he was there. trying, but. He's well, there are a lot, I mean like. They're a liar. There were a lot of games like this back then that, like my friends played Diablo for hours and hours and hours. And I was always like, what? Diablo 2, really? Like why? Mm. And they're like, it's great, it's so much fun. And they were playing it years after it was released. And I was like, there are so many better games. And you kill, you kill Diablo. Yeah. And you do it again. They would just, I would just they'd loop it. Yeah. And the other Lords of Destruction, like Mephisto mm -hmm. and Bale. <laughs> Uh, Jacob's also here. Jacob's yeah. here. I was I was late on the Fallout train too, which I also do with Elder Scrolls. I jumped in on the fourth one. Oh yeah. And then discovered that it existed, and then I'm went back and played. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I everyone lost their shit over was it Morrowind? Yeah. But I, I didn't. I missed that one. I I was even late on Oblivion. Oblivion. Like I I had missed Oblivion, and then I quickly played through it, like basically did a speed run because I didn't realize it was an open world game that you can just do a bunch of stuff. So I'm like. Beginning, middle, end. I beat it. Beat the game. I'm all done. I'm ready for Skyrim. Let's do this. Yeah. Sean Bean was in that. It was exciting. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was the son of uh, Jean Luc Picard. He was somebody. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, Jean Luc Picard's in that game? Wow. He's in the very beginning. He's he, the king. He's he like, dies Star right away. Spoilers. Oh. Yeah, um, I mean, that was the advent of boy, we got a big ticket on this this RPG. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. And then Liam Neeson, old Fallout 4 or 3. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Liam Neeson was in Fallout 3. I should Liam's go play Fallout 3. When you're the baby, you come out of your mom's yeah. badge I totally hole, forgot about that. And he's like, hello, son. Yeah. It's quite gone. I'm learning you know? so much about all these games. And then games he disappears that I play. for, yeah. what is it? 90% of the game? I was going to say at least 90%. More than that. He, yeah. I think he shows up somewhere in the middle, somewhere at the end. But there's no middle or end because it's an open world, whatever. Yeah. Oh, he's definitely Great games, though. Well, Great we basically fun. already did it. Uh, I guess we can go around, introduce ourselves, and, and declare our Fallout experience so the audience can either decide to listen to what we have to say or dismiss everything we have to say outright because mm. that's how gaming works. Uh, I'm the host, Lawrence. I've played all the Fallouts except for New Vegas. Which is weird because wasn't there some Brotherhood of Steel like DLC thing? Yeah, I played that. Well, there was oh, a, wow. there was a sorry, tactical game. That's one. Oh wait, what? I'm oh, sorry. Maybe it's a, it's a completely there different game. There was Fallout right? Tactics, and Dang. then there was Brotherhood of Steel, which was like an action game. Gotcha. Yeah, which is weird because Fallout as a brand has already kind of been all over the map, but people are mad about this one. Some very few people are. It's fine. Uh, don't be Bruce. Bruce, what is your Fallout experience? I've played all of them except for four. Yeah. Oh. Did not play Fallout Four. Uh, and I was the most excited about that one. Um, and I just, I remember watching the trailers and a lot of people talking about it. And even people that played it for hours and hours and hours that came back, they were like, nah, it wasn't very good. Uh -huh. And I was always like, 
that never makes any sense to me. I, it doesn't make any sense to me either, but... 90 hours this game. It's not I, fun. The Fallout 4 <laughs> is like the kind of game that if I'm ever unemployed, that's what I'll do. I'll play Fallout 4. I'll play Skyrim. I'll play like... but Because I know they're going to take 40 hours of my mm. of my day every single day. So. More than that. Um, but I just haven't done it yet. All right. Haven't done it yet. Waiting for that mythical three-month stretch of it's unemployment. never going to happen. But. You're all the rock star, <laughs> uh, Jacob, what's your... What's your Fallout experience? Yeah, I'm, I'm almost the opposite of Bruce. I played 3 back when it came out, and I played that through once. And for some reason, I just didn't play New Vegas. So I, I think I didn't really follow video game releases or anything. I just like, oh, it's Fallout game. My friends say it's good. I'll play it. And then just don't pay attention to anything else. And then I played 4. I played a lot of 4 and generally had a good time. That's good. I haven't done all the DLCs yet, but... That's my Fallout experience. I don't know really anything else about it outside the game. So well, you're gonna learn. Oh mm-hmm. yes. I got some wiki articles to read for you, my friend. Should I be mad about Fallout 76? Uh, I'll tell you <laughs> later. Okay. What you're, we'll what you're you supposed you to be mad. About. Yeah. Uh, Adam, what, what is your experience with Fallout? Uh, like I said, I knew of the other games, had no interest, didn't even really care. I thought Fallout 3 was gonna be more of a first-person shooter thing. People don't know it's not, and then I played it, and I once the vats kicked in, it made sense. So. Single playthrough of most of the DLC and Fallout through whatever. Um, most of New Vegas' DLC, but main storyline stuff. But yeah, I played the most of Fallout 4. Oh, I didn't know that. I play, I'm actually, I'm currently playing it right now because I never did the uh, Nuka, Nuka Land. I haven't done that one either. DLC. I've only done through Far Harbor. And it, it's good. It's like really good stuff. I And now that there's been enough time with all the mods that have gone by, I think I installed like 32 mods. <laughs> just, just random little things like different weapons, clothing, uh, visual texture packs, like, it's crazy. So, it was funny, I think Ricky uh, from formerly ETC, what's their new channel called now? Internet Today? Internet Today. Uh, Ricky from Internet Today posted a thing of like, here's my mod list, and it was from the same Reddit post that I saw, Uh. (laughs) where I saw it, and then I even sent that to Rahul. (laughs) But I'm like, the guy just posted his old mod list, and I'm like, downloading it, let's, screw it, let's see what happens, and I'm playing it right now, I'm like, Pretty fucking cool. Okay, interesting. Yeah, good stuff. Like lowered gun mod. Your gun lowers. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the little things. Immersion. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to ask you guys about Fallout 4 because I bailed out of that game pretty quickly. I remember you doing that. Yeah. I was, was worried about that. Nothing Uh-oh. there that appealed to me. I was worried that Lawrence did because I mean, like, I, I well, figured Lawrence would latch onto it. But. I'm, I'm, mm. Well, I've latched onto other Fallouts. So Fallout, Fallout 2 is my favorite, which I think says probably why I don't like 4. If you even have any context about what I'm talking about, so let's talk about Fallout 76 real quick. Uh, what Bethesda, is it? Yeah, well, yeah, we don't know actually. Exactly. Bethesda did like a, a really long teasing live stream where it was just a please stand by hold pattern yeah. with a little uh, Vault Boy bobblehead, um, and like various people would go on and off of the thing. I thought it was a pretty interesting thing to drum up excitement. Led up to a teaser for Fallout 76, uh, which is just like a one minute thing, a lot of panning shots of Vault 76, mm. uh, which to, I guess to Leap it back one more thing. Fallout as a setting is post-apocalyptic. There was something called the Great War that occurred in... Let me control F this thing. Got it right oh. here. Yeah, you're going to go down a, a fun rabbit hole with uh, all the... Uh, that's what you kind of need for this sort the of The timeline. I, I know people are really up on... like They're very hardcore about the timeline. Damn. I don't care, personally. I'm a, it's sort of like whatever, but uh, according to some of the stuff I've seen, this because of the timeline of this game, you actually see it in the clock or whatever, it would be... It's before the Super Mutants, I know that. It's before Fallout 1. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's... Wait, 76s? Yeah. Yeah, it's Uh, gonna be like the prequel of all prequels. So, uh, there was... for Operation Anchorage, right? That was the Fallout 3 DLC where Oh, that was during the Great War. But you go go in a VR simulation, you go back in time, and you go to Alaska where... Yeah, that's... Uh, I don't care. I I don't know any of these (laughs) things. So, the the Great War happened in 2077. Uh, It was... It was only a few hours long. Every nuclear-capable nation bombed each other to oblivion. That's great. Um, in the years leading up to the Great War, Vault Tech, which is a private company, built a lot of Fallout shelters called vaults. Uh, some of them were sociological experiments. Um, they would just like fuck with the people inside in a number of ways, like cut off the cut off the electricity, cut off the water, just to see what people would do. Vault 76 is a control vault, meaning it's a totally normal vault. No. Uh, it's got 500 occupants, programmed to open 20 years after a nuclear war. It's called Vault 76 uh, because, let's see here. Uh, where did I write this down? Well, it's, I, it was open on the tricentennial yeah, of America. I just saw a poster. There we go. That said 1976 to 2076. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, the Great War occurred in 2077. Mm-hmm. It was right before the Great War. Yep. So uh, yeah, so it, let's see here. 
Vault 76 is mentioned in 3 and 4. Uh, da, da, da. It's in Washington, D.C. area. There's usually a lot of speculation about where Fallouts take place because the map and the surrounding areas are so important. Mm-hmm, yeah. D.C. area was where Fallout 3 happened. That was mm-hmm. the capital wasteland. And Vault 76 wasn't on that map, so it's got to be in the outlying areas. It's kind of where people, what people think. Yeah, I know it, it's hidden. existed in the lore for a while. Mm-hmm. I know because people have already... It's just mentioned in like yeah. journal posts and stuff. Mm-hmm. So at least Bethesda's, I guess... Sort of adhering to their own lore, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. Sort of. Unless there was something about Jet in like Fallout 3 oh. that everybody was mad at Pete Hines about. Oh. Oops. And he was like, he was basically like, be quiet, nerds. No. Oh. <laughs> that was yeah. a fun exchange. Yeah. Uh, that, like Jet was referenced in an email before Jet was supposedly to have existed in this world. And people got real mad about that. Yeah. Weird thing. Anyway. I'm more of a Buffett man. <laughs> That's for you nerds. John Denver. Which, yeah, by the way, uh, (laughs) Country Roads was the song, which is also a bit of a break from tradition. Fallout games usually have, like, Ink Spots is the most common band, but it's usually a 30s or 40s quartet. Uh, This is a song from the 70s, which made a lot of people confused about 76, which makes a lot of people think of 1976. May have nothing to do with that. Anyway. (laughs) That sounds like it's going to take place in 2076. It's going to take place in 2020. Wait. (laughs) Damn it. 2102. What? Uh, yeah, so mm. the vault. Oh. It was Vault 76 Got that it. opened I in see. 2076, yes, yes. but the vo- like the vault after the war opened yeah. 20 years later. Makes sense. What doesn't make sense is that the vault then opened in uh it opened 4 years before that. So it the vault opened in 2097, 20 years after the Great War. Right. But the the uh pit boy that the dude puts on on the trailer has a date of October 27th, 2102. So it's been five years after it opened? Yeah. So for some reason, the vault dweller that you mm. play as in 76 has been just waiting in the vault for five years after it opened? How, or they've uh, been going out and coming back? How far before that is Fallout 1? Well, it's not, actually. So the first Fallout oh. 1 was in 2161. Uh, 76 takes place in 2102. So this is before the first Fallout chronologically when did the, Hold on. When did, hold on. <laughs> when did the first... When does Fallout 1... 21 what? 2161. Okay. Fallout 2. 2241. Fallout 3. 2277. Fallout 4. 2287. Okay, so... Except for the opening part, which is predates everything, right? Because huh? it's, it's, it's on... That's like during the Great the Fallout War. Fallout 4? Fallout 4, because oh. there, there's the opening prequel Then yeah, you go part. in and get cryogenically frozen. That, that's, I mean, that is in 2077 when the Great War happened. Yeah, so they're all in sequential order except for Fallout 76, which is all yes. the way at the beginning. That's correct. Yeah. Fallout okay. 76 is supposedly a century and a half before Fallout 1, which is is weird, considering what the game is supposed to be or what they're talking about it to be. Okay, yeah. I think that answers Basically, my question. how can we put a Battle Royale <laughs> mode into <laughs> Fallout? So yeah. Um, so we, we, what are we supposed to be mad about, Lawrence? Well, okay, we'll get onto that. Initial speculation was that, um, given that it's not a numbered game, it's not Fallout 5. Of course. Uh, and it hasn't been long enough since Fallout 4 for Bethesda to really make a full no, sequel. not at all. Um, people are like, oh, this must just be like a side game or a cash in on modern trends. Oh, wait, when did New Vegas take place? <laughs> oh, yeah, good, good. 2281. But it's actually between Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, so, so, since all of that's happening, and like the fact that it's so early in the timeline means you can't, I guess you could do a lot of plot stuff, but it'd have to be internally consistent. Especially because there's dudes out there who keep an eye on when Jet was supposedly manufactured for the first time. Bruce, you know what Jet is? No. It's like one of the drugs. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a future drug. I does, think I does do the know one that. that makes you angry? Yeah, I think it, no, that's... it gives you strength, and I think. It freaks you out for a little bit. What's the one that makes you angry? I think that's Jet. I okay. used it a bunch of Fallout 4, Psycho. but I don't remember. Yeah, Psycho. Psycho's another I, one. I, mean, I, played, I played Fallout 3 a ton, but I, that was years. That was like eight, nine years. That was ten years ago. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Fallout 3, yeah. It's, it's, it was 2008 is when it came out. Yeah, yeah. aged well. Oh, very gosh. ugly game. It was ugly when it came out. <laughs> no, I know. It's very ugly. That's every that's a game, though. Yeah. So now on to the wild speculation, because we, to be frank, but this hasn't said a peep about what the game actually is. Uh, but time for speculation. So if it's a prequel to everything, a battle royale would make sense. You're just one of a million, like, crazed people in the wasteland. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. no super mutants or any of that scary stuff that happens yet. Not yet, but it should be, like, super irritated it's and, like... 25 years after the Great War. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're right. And contracting should, rings should of, like, things that damage you, like, fallout. the mechanics make sense. Radioactive fallout or constricting like, you into an area. Yeah, uh-huh. There's a really good chance, this is my guess, is that there's going to be an online component. I think this is... This is Bethesda dipping their toe into the multiplayer, like them, because uh, Bethesda is actually making it, not like the company who made Elder Scrolls Online. 
That was like that was an outside company. That Zenimax. wasn't that was. So this was, well, was, Zenimax is the big mega corporation. Yeah, I don't remember. Sure. This is yeah. pinned to Bethesda Game Studios, uh, oh, yeah. who is in Maryland. However, uh, Kotaku ran or Jason Schreier read, ran an article from three sources that say that Fallout seventy six is an online survival RPG, okay. more like Daisy or Rust, and that oh. it's being worked on by it's a co development between Bethesda Game Studios in Maryland and an Austin branch that was previously working on. Battle Cry? Wait, oh, the game that canceled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> MOBA. Uh, what was the game? What was the name of that so game? So that means when they started development on this, things like Conan Exiles and Ark were like the hot shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now since then it's shifted to yeah. Battle Royale. <laughs> so that gives you kind of a time frame of when they started working on this game. <laughs> Two, three years ago. Which is smart. I don't know. I mean, I could see that as them saying like, what IP can we leverage into a different sort of genre? And Fallout hasn't really gone outside of the typical RPG. Well, we've not world. really had an online fallout no no that's what i thought no. yeah. there there were mods no it oh. was like a scrapped project i think they were working on fallout online at okay. black isle before it died not, that's always the thing that everybody begs bethesda for is like they want skyrim but online so it's like basically yeah yeah but then they made all the trolls online and apparently it's really good now but sure but good. i mean when it first came out everybody shit on it and it was like no this is garbage it's an mmo it's boring yeah well i mean I of course like it. It played exactly like th- that's the thing that's so confusing to me because Skyrim is boring. It's real boring. So is Fallout Kind 4. of, but at least in Skyrim, I can play it at my leisure. And what I didn't like was they're like, go like, go to the Black Tooth Isle, and then you go there, and then they're like, kill the skeleton. Like, okay, cool. They're like, but then some other dude runs in oh. from out of the forest, goes, ah, kills the skeleton. And there's like, wait for the skeleton to come back, yeah. <laughs> and then kill him again. Well, that's like, MMO. That's what you do. Yeah, MMO. That's, yeah. that's that's a big reason why I hated. Uh, was it Old Republic? I was just like, yeah, that's exactly I, what it was. I yeah. didn't feel special yeah. in Skyrim. It's like I felt like I was wandering this big world, and I could enter it and exit it when I wanted to. Yeah. Well, so, you're Dragonborn. <laughs> I was, but so was that other guy. Yeah. <laughs> the whole world of Dragonborns is. Yeah, so, but, yeah I've got a. Okay. I mean, it makes sense that they want. I mean, like. I want to see a Fallout online. I, I doubt it's an yeah. MMO though. If, if we're talking about survival, okay. It, I imagine they keep they're going to keep it to. I don't a know. What do you think? Folks. Like a rust or an arc? Yeah, type of thing. The like forest for, like, or how, something. I, I don't know. I guess maybe you, how many people can do an arc? Like, well, they had all those. A lot. They had all okay. those build tools in Fallout Four. They Which did. didn't make any sense to me because oh, it didn't man. really play into the game at all. I use those too much. Cool. I built so many like stupid houses and stuff for all of my settlements. I had like robots going back and forth. <laughs> I spent this weekend working on my penthouse. <laughs> oh, geez, okay. Well, yeah. It worked for, for some people then. You, well, the, the mod tools help a lot. Oh, See, but yeah. wouldn't you want that but like persistent in an online world? Yes. Okay, yeah. This, this mean, is, do you though? The most annoying thing in Fallout 4 was your settlement's under attack. Imagine if players were doing that. Oh, no, never no. I, I think if it was That's sort true. of a, like a yeah. destiny maybe sort of situation where it's like, say it's like three or four of us, right? And we're building a settlement. Mm. And we just have to, whenever we get online, there's, there's no other players fucking with us. It's just environment. Okay. I'd be down for that. I see. Like well, a co-op. I don't, a co-op I don't know if they, dude, that's not what online survival is. <laughs> online no, survival is typically the environment's fucking with you and, and other players, yeah. usually. So, like, unless they choose to be cool. I know. guess. I mean, I guess what should happen is, say you build a base and then everyone logs off or whatever, the thing should just be covered in turrets. So if anyone even tries to fuck with it, it just, you just auto-die. Yeah. <laughs> they stop people from fucking up your shit. I don't know. Yeah, like that, I, that makes, that's never fair. That just means you're gonna have to grind out a lot of metal or rocks or whatever you need to build turrets. No, you use any bucks. Just yeah. Punching I, a, recently, oh, yeah. Rec- any dollars, yeah. that's the bucks. Recently I played uh, through the forest with John, and um, and that, like, I don't know how many people you can have playing at one time, but it was just us like building forts and stuff, and then like night comes and a bunch of cannibals come and start busting down your walls yeah. and things like that. So maybe it wouldn't necessarily be people against each other all the time. Maybe you could all be like working together in this post-apocalyptic thing. Well, that's I mean that's that's how those online survival games work. Like yeah. if people choose to work with you, they can. Yeah. So like Ark, we, if we all decided we wanted to play together, and we're like, you know what? It's cool. Nobody touch anybody else's shit. <laughs> then we wouldn't. But then there would always break down, and people would get upset every, and start blowing things up. So. Every one of those games are <laughs> aimless. Yeah, that's always been my issue with all of them. There's, I would love for there to be a starting point, even if it's minimal as Destiny, or it's just something of like, this is your role. This is the world. Take a quest. Do this thing, and then there is a bigger uh, gameplay mechanic of like building up your settlement or whatever. Like. I'm okay with that. If it's just like kind of a small pocket of the Fallout world, at least there's a story or there's a reason doing this instead of neat dinosaur. 
Yeah, that, that's what yeah. happened with us when we were playing the forest. We were building a bunch of things, and we followed this trail through this cave, and then we ended up at the end of the game, and we beat it, and credits rolled. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were very surprised. I didn't so. beat that game. I yeah, mean, me like, either. I mean, these online survival games are still big. Raft is a good example. Of uh, it's a, yeah, it's a new online oh. survival game that people. Oh, it's are the one on the over. ocean, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't played it yet, but it sounds awesome. Um, these games always sound awesome to me. And then when I get in them, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's right, it's a huge grind. I always forget how much of a grind they are, like Punch Rust and Wood and or stuff. Ark I, or any of those. Other I always things. thought that so was because trees. it was an early access game that didn't have any sort of story to fall back on, and they just created these artificial barriers for you to climb over to sort of extend the life of the game. It, it works. Like, yeah, that, that was my the, that was always my theory. I, I would hope if Fallout is a not an early access game. So sorry, uh, Fallout seventy or just Fallout seventy six. Fallout seventy six. Yeah. If it is a full sixty dollar game, that there won't. Hopefully, that stuff will be sped up. Yeah, you won't have to do any of the bullshit grinding. Because yeah, since this is coming from Bethesda, what's like the next biggest online survival studio? That's making a game like that. Are there like any big ones? That's true. You're right. Like they're all kind of. I mean, like Ark is probably the biggest, right? Probably. Subnautica. Kind of Exiles. Yeah. Subnautica, Subnautica is, you're alone though. That's not online. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, oh yeah, Conan too. Although um, I don't know how big I mean, Conan Minecraft? is. Minecraft. Uh, it depends Maybe. how loose you want to be with the definition. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Stuff but like I, Disney Infinity was kind of like that. Yeah. Well, but this is like a major studio, so maybe like it'll be. Well, like that scale will be more grand. So that's the interesting thing. I. The scale will probably be bigger, but I also think the gameplay itself will be simpler or less intimidating. Because Rust survives on brutality, which yes. is kind of what Fallout's supposed to be, but hasn't been. So Fallout 3 and 4 have been incrementally simpler, easier to approach, and given way less friction to the player. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you if you have to do a quest, you're, you're pretty sure you're going to find plenty of bullets, plenty of healing items. Mm -hmm. You'll just stomp through a building, get the shiny thing out of a drawer, take it back to where you need to go and get your experience. Yeah. Fallout 1 and 2 were a little more survival based. You had to scrimp on ammo, you had to scrimp on everything. Mm -hmm. Because you talk your way out of situations. If you had the right skills, I yeah. mean, Fallout 4 still has some of that, but it's obvious. It's it's way dumbed down, obviously. Yeah. For, I feel for like dumb this, dumbs this like franchise me. is just absolutely made for the online survival genre. I just, I'm actually surprised. I'm like, I'm not surprised they hadn't done it yet. Yeah. Um, Slow down. Pete Hines just, in a meeting uh, uh, five years ago. I mean, just, but it just seems like it, right? <laughs> like it, it makes total sense that you'd be surviving online with other people around. And this is always like I always hear people begging for that. It's just the same thing. It's like mm -hmm. it would be so cool if you walk through the wasteland, you kill a scorpion, you pick up a spear and this badass gun, and then another player rot walks up, and then you can part with partner with them or kill them or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's basically like it's an MMO, is what you're describing, um, but it's in the Fallout world. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. It sounds cool to me. Yeah. I I always saw. What was it? What was the game that was the hot thing before World of Warcraft? It was EverQuest. Um, yes. Ugh. So anytime anyone described EverQuest, I wanted to kill myself. Oh no! It, it looks and sounds like garbage. <laughs> they were it's like, they're like, it's so hard to play. It's not fun. Nothing's great. You'll love it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds dumb. And that, and they're well, if you die, you basically lost everything, right? I never was played it. it. Was it My dad wouldn't let me use this card. The, the way it was described to me, and I could be wrong, was if you died, you like basically just lost all your stuff. And they're like, and I'm like that doesn't sound fun at all. And World of Warcraft came along, and they're like, no, 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 you keep all your stuff. And then everybody is like, yeah, let's see. Each oh, God. Oh, God. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's way better than, okay, we're shutting down the servers. <laughs> so, Adam, you hit on a really good point, which is that there is, there is often a conflict between people who say they want a brutal and demanding experience mm. and what the market demonstrates that people enjoy. Yes. And uh, by and large, the bigger properties of the world are very easy to approach, do not hit you with a lot of failure, yeah. mm. uh, and failure is typically very lenient. But uh, I guess for me, what I, I correlate like ease of play with the progression of the Fallout universe. And especially Fallout 4 did a big thing of like, welcome home, it's all about rebuilding. The, the universe is more colorful and approachable now. Mm -hmm. And that was meant to jive with like the building aspects of the game. However, 76 is set way before all that. When theoretically the world is more brutal, there's less civilization because it's just 20 years after a cataclysmic event that scorched most of the planet. Mm -hmm. So being Bethesda, who Bethesda is now, and making games for the entire planet, how are they going to rectify supposedly being in a more brutal setting in a more brutal uh, genre of game? Survival sim is supposed to be pretty taxing. Mm. Like if you die in Ark, your shit drops on the ground. You have to go sure. back and get it. And if there's a giant turtle sitting on it, you're fucked. <laughs> so I don't know... That, I, mean, I don't like, know how to justify all you that. You may have already justified it there with your description, which is if they're saying, well, it's really brutal, this is the most brutal time in the Fallout world, 
Uh, which means Fallout 76 is only shooting for the very dedicated audience that they'll get. Man, that'd be weird. I know. Yeah. That's, and that's, God, no. I, think, I don't think that that's the way Bethesda works. Mm. But having said that, Bethesda usually spend, what, five, six years on a game. They may only spend a couple of years on this one. So to me, it's like their return on investment doesn't have to be as much as a Skyrim or a Fallout 4. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Bruce, I think you've nailed it. Uh, okay. Uh, th that's just my, my summarizing theory is that, that given the amount of time between this and the last game, given the rumors that it's a co-development with them and another studio, because I think they brought they bought Battlecry Studios and then we're like, eh, Battlecry's not so good. Mm -hmm. I think they may have given them the tool set the creation engine from Fallout 4 that has all the building stuff in it. They're like, make a game with this, except it can't be a Fallout scale game. Like, it can't have mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of quests. I would be surprised if it's the creation engine. I honestly, I think they would. You think it's a new thing? Yeah, I, I'm. Oh. My, I only say that because Fallout, even Fallout Four, shooting mechanics are not great. Like, yeah. and they're not supposed to be because they want you to sort of do the pen and paper bat system. You know, it's sort of their RPG element. That's like a, like sort of the one thing that's been keeping Fallout to be still somewhat of an RPG mm -hmm. before coming full first person shooter. How do you do that mechanic online with other people? Yeah, you can't. You can't stop time. I mean, maybe it's a... Maybe there are no guns. Oh, no, there are guns. <laughs> well, there will be guns. <laughs> so they're, they're, just given the, given the thing you're talking about, the problems you're talking about, and the fact that it takes place 20 years after the bombs drop, mm -hmm. maybe people haven't had a chance to like rediscover gunsmithing oh, in dude. this world. If, if a fall game came out and it didn't have the Fat Boy launcher, there would be a riot. <laughs> like, Probably. you need those things. That's yeah. as, as, as much as you want to believe that they're going to be like, but the lore, and someone's gonna be like, but the microtransactions, they're like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, you got Yeah, so they're in a vault, they'll find weapons. It's like, if, or you'll go out into the world and I'm sure they'll, like I said, so much has happened since uh, they were working on Fallout 4, right? So Destiny has become a really popular thing. Oh, I, I mean, arguably not so much anymore, but Ark, all these survival games. So now like, okay, shooter, looter, Battle and Royale, survival. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, Royale, Battle Royale games. So, which is, as we've seen with Fortnite, it's something you can probably just mod in later. So they're probably working on a game that's heavily focused on shooting. I was gonna say, so do you think they've figured out, this the whole argument hinges on whether or not they figured out VATS online. Hmm. Maybe um, it's like a group perk. Like everyone does VATS at one time. That's, and that's kind of what I was thinking is that like, or maybe it's just like auto aim. Imagine, yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Maybe yeah. it just aims for uh, you. It doesn't necessarily go into slow mo or something. Imagine if, but imagine if you were online and somebody tar like targeted you and you froze. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you were being batted. I know. No, 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 please, no. please, yeah. don't aim for the head. Don't aim for the head. <laughs> there were shooters like Stranglehold did this in Max Payne Three, mm -hmm. where it would do slow mo, but only if you and somebody else were aiming at each other and doing slow mo at the That's same time. Right. Yeah, they would. So yeah. you'd be like slow mo diving, and people would be running around in real time around you. It worked, surprisingly. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think something like that could work for VATS because it'd have to be turn-based. You can't be like, okay, you can shoot me now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hit, hit your button. No, okay. Maybe it is just, just an, aim for the eyes. Maybe that's something that would only work on the environment, but it would just be funny to walk by and Bruce isn't going in slow motion, <laughs> looking at anything we're all just staring at. I'm like, all right, dude, we're going this way. <laughs> and then the enemy he's looking at is also moving in slow motion. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder, I mean, like, because now I'm, I'm starting to think of what trailer they'll show. Uh, during their press conference, and I'm wondering if they'll show us VATS. Like, because if anything, like, I'm, I'm the more that we talk about this, the more I'm like, this whole thing hinges on VATS. Like, mm. if if they take away VATS, then it's a, a totally different game. Mm -hmm. But if they do have it, then it's a then it's something new that I don't know that we've seen um, from oh. Fallout. Which Someone in chat has an interesting proposition. Can W says the old Pip Boy doesn't support VATS. <gasps> Because, yeah, uh, it goes through your Pip Boy. I forgot about that. And he does put that. on a very fucking old Pip Boy in the trailer. Yeah. I. Yes, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, it's probably gone. That's, that's why I'm saying it can't be the creation engine yeah. because that is not a great engine for shooting. It's not a great engine for anything. There I mean, it's, it's, it's a great engine for Fallout 4. <laughs> People love that derpy shit. They love it. I don't know. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the reason you play it, kind of. I just same with Skyrim and everything else. Like, uh, it's all it's all really derpy and it never ever looks yeah, real. Yeah. I love it when the wizard falls through the floor and then shoots into space. <laughs> It's not, like, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's, it's not. Uh, You're right. There are a lot of stuff that's pretty bad. I don't know. Just, it looks bad. It runs yeah, bad. Maybe yeah. like, I guess without rats, we just have to hinge on just being in the Fallout environment and yeah. just building on whatever, yeah. like, yeah, then brand more and stuff there is. Right. Yeah, They're just leaning on brand. Which mm -hmm. so I've got a, I got a series of of summarizing questions to ask you guys. 
I thought about doing a gimmick where I make you give this trailer stats via the special system, but that's actually going to be a little too complicated. We'll be here all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do your goat. Yeah. Oh, we could do that. First, there is one goat for this podcast, and it is Audible, uh, who is sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring Dude Soup. Uh, Audible, like you know, it's summertime, and what better to do with your summer break than listen to a lot of books? But since you're listening to it, you can do it. Uh, you can do that during summer activities like hiking, <laughs> playing volleyball. <laughs> I just think summer volleyball, and then I, ima- I imagine somebody listening mm. to War and Peace will bump set yeah. spiking, which nothing says summer like s- spiking a volleyball directly into somebody's face while listening to great literature. Uh, it also has speed control, the Audible app does, so if, if you find that a normal person's speech is too slow for your brain, you can kick it into gear or slow it down and make somebody sound kind of drunk. I know that's how a lot of people listen to podcasts. If you've got a raft of them to get through, you just put it on 1.25 and let the information roll into your brain. You can do that with Audible. It also has the coolest feature I've ever heard in my entire life, Whisper Sync, <laughs> uh, which lets you go back and forth between listening to an audiobook and reading it reading a book on a, on a device like a Kindle or an Echo. Basically, cloud saves your progress through a book, and then you can bounce back and forth between devices, depending on whether you're enjoying a, a nice reading session next to a breezy open window, or relaxing on the beach, or going for a hike, or what have you. And uh, this is one of the cool things about Audible I didn't know before I started using it. You actually get to keep the books. Uh, so you get a token every month, you spend that on a book, and then that's in your library for good. So you can go back and re-listen any time, even if you cancel your membership. And we have an offer for you guys. You can get a free audio book with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash dudesoup, or you can text dudesoup to 500-500. Uh, personally, I've been, my project has been catching up on His Dark Materials since that's going forward. I want to get all caught up before, before that comes out. It's fun. I didn't know that that series was so good. It's yeah. weird. I, I had always just associated it with like C.S. Lewis type stuff, because mm-hmm. I guess I had heard Fantasy that it was supposed to be Christian things. overtones or something. Yeah, it's fully voiced too on Audible. Yeah. Yeah, that full great. cast is super awesome. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a BBC I, radio play. Yeah. I've been catching up on all that new Star Wars canon on my way to work. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah. I'm going to have to quiz you about that way that behind on all that. Yeah, I'm, I've actually been reading it like a chump. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm optimizing my Star Wars consumption. Look at him. He's the perfect man. None of it matters. <laughs> <laughs> it but once again, you can get a free audio free audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash dudesoup or text dudesoup to 500-500, that's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash dudesoup, or text dudesoup to 500-500. Thank you, Audible, for the sponsorship, and for all, all the smarts. Books are the smartest smartest form of media, there I said it. Smarter than poetry, if you can imagine it. But what if you put poetry in a book? Yeah, well, poetry <laughs> is in books. <gasps> yeah. more, more times than not, yes. <laughs> all right. I got I got some summarizing questions about when do we get angry about this game? Uh, yeah, that's one of the questions actually. Uh, well, I guess next week, right? <laughs> I will tell you when to be angry. Um, all right, so I, some of these we've already kind of touched on, but so specifically for the trailer, here are some like open-ended questions. I don't know we can answer, but maybe we can speculate on. Why did the player character wait for five years inside the vault to go outside? I mean, probably because maybe he wanted to be. Like, make sure it was safe. Yeah. Or it's like you said, it was the normal vault. So maybe life inside was good. Yeah. I so guess. maybe it was just like, well, it's all radioactive outside. We're all living in here and it's fine. That's a really good point. Yeah. Usually fallouts begin with something breaking, like yeah. a water chip or and you have to find a gas. Things gap. inside the vaults are always like really fucked up. They're yeah. like everybody's getting messed with and stuff. But if in here it's just normal life and they're surviving inside yeah. their fallout bunker, then sure. It's like stay a, for five years. It's like a snow piercer situation where. The engine that is running the machine is breaking down, so now they have to leave to yeah. get something to power it up. But then, when you go out into the world, you go, "Oh, there! We can actually rebuild out here. We don't have to stay inside the vault." Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe there's a fight there. I'm there. Sure, I'm sure there's a fight there. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, every oh, what was it? So Fallout Three and Fallout Four are both games where you started in a vault, mm-hmm. and then you left. they all start in a vault. New Vegas. Oh, uh, New Vegas does not. But one or two shot also in the head. <laughs> yeah, which that's is how it opens. Cool it's a oh. Chandler Bing. Blows your brains out, oh, and then you wake up. The the old guy from uh, Battlestar Galactica is like, "Yeah, hey, you got killed, and I fixed you." <laughs> <laughs> Dump that bullet out now of your go to that machine and figure out your perks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go and roll your ten luck yeah. roll as usual. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question: Why do you think they went with a 1970s folk song, "Country Roads," instead of the 70s, 2076? Of course, that's why. That's not when the game happens, though. I know, but I mean, like, it kind of makes sense that you went into the vault around that time, probably. Isn't right? one of the lyrics in the song is West Virginia? Yeah. I think that's That's it. where the roads are going. I think that's... That's it. I think that's <laughs> it. Oh, you think so? It's based in West Virginia. I think they just wanted you to, to know that the 
I don't think the time period of the song made any difference. It was the lyrics that said, you know, West Virginia. I think it would make it would make sense to me that it was a '70s style song because it's the '70s. That's what it makes sense. That makes the most sense to me. I mean, right now we're just recreating what happened in this boardroom. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yes. where the the promo guys are both getting hard. Yeah, I know. Because they're like, oh, it will <laughs> be West Virginia, and it's in the '70s, and they're like, we still do some cocaine. <laughs> so I guess it's great. feasible. West Virginia isn't. Super, super far from the D.C. area. No, not at all. How no. far is it from Bethesda, Maryland? I don't know. Where Bethesda's from. Uh. Some IMDb trivia for you. <laughs> I did think it was interesting that the... I think that's kind of notable because the setting for Fallout 4 leaked because they had location scouts going to Boston. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there has been no such news. Either they got really good at hiding it or it is in that area. Also, how did you? how do they know... They were guys from Bethesda. Were they wearing like Bethesda Fallout 4 shirts? No, somebody had mentioned that they were from Bethesda and oh. they were like touring something. And so like some, you know, in, some nerd basically was like, oh, they're from Bethesda. And then leaked it. Yeah. Probably, I think it was on Reddit. Um, <laughs> Damn. People listening, man. Yeah. So uh, also in the trailer, uh, there is, maybe I need to look it up and pause it on there, but there is a big banner and like a lot of balloons and celebrations for Reclamation Day. Mm-hmm. Which isn't really mentioned anyth- in anything else. So what do you think Reclamation Day could be? Well, you're reclaiming something. Maybe it's after the five years. They can go out. They're allowed to go reclaim. The territory. The territory. Maybe yeah. five years is like an amount of time they have to wait yeah. after waking up. Sorry about that. To go back outside or something. Could be. And yeah, then, well, there is. There actually, yeah, what's the context of this? I want to see it. There really isn't any context. Uh, so there's. I want to see the context of the banner, is what I mean. Oh, I see. Uh, so, it's, just, it's just like in a great hall. Yeah, things to note is there's a there's like a speech here, presumably from the coronation of Vault 76 in 2076. And he's basically saying, like, you when all the dust settles, you'll have to rebuild. Which, to me, I think le- leans into the idea of this being a survival sim. And then there's all these panning shots of the vault with no one in it, and then this. Oh, okay. So, Reclamation oh, Day, okay. there's a bunch of, like, little vault boys around. So there's obviously a party. Yeah, this looks like a soccer. Are we are we there? saying this is the party of like they're leaving the vault? That's what I. That's that what sense. I thought. It's like okay, it's been twenty years. It's time for the vault to open. And let's go out reclaim America for every good American yeah. boy and girl. And so then they and realize on his old ass. As they walk out, they realize everything's blown to hell and it's gonna suck. Because mm-hmm. usually, mean, yeah. usually Fallout does a, a good just, juxtaposition of like the reason the Fallout boy. Um, actually works really well is because like he's so happy and vibrant, but the world sucks yeah. and it's garbage. And that's that's this to me says that like oh like everything's really happy and like totally fine for some reason nobody knows that the world's blown blown to hell. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as they walk out, ah, oh, good point. They're like ah oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, they have to know. Well, in running that way, chat right. mentions that it's Vault Boy on a poster with trees. So that's a small detail because there are basically no living trees in the Fallout world. <laughs> no. uh, so that's con- and there are actually trees inside the vault. It, it's probably them, like in a weird sort of like patriotic way, or like time to reclaim yeah. the the soil. But then, you know, they were gonna get a rude awakening when they get out there. And yeah. Then, yeah. There's two headed cows. Yeah. It's just, a bunch of mutants and shit. Yeah. Brahmin. Oh yeah, the Brahmin. No <laughs> super mutants though. Apparently, super mutants were not around at this time. Oh. Yeah, that, according did, to the IGN video I watched. Oh, okay. <laughs> they said on the timeline doesn't fit, but they also in the video they did say that like Bethesda has been known to like you know circumvent their own lore anyway. So yeah. if it you know if it makes for an interesting enemy in a video game, why right. let some lore that was written whatever yeah. how many years ago stop you? I don't know. Pete Hines doesn't care. He wants to make money. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, this is this is going to be pure speculation, unlike the rest of this, which is solid fact. But it was all speculation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> given the fact that it's earlier in Fallout timeline, the fact that it's called seventy six, do you think that this Fallout will have the same sort of nineteen fifties retro future aesthetic that people come to associate hmm. with Fallout? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it must if that continues on through all the games. So maybe. No. Oh. oh. I'm going to say the seventies. That's oh. what I'm, I'm just going to. I'm. Why not? I'll put a stake in it and say right. fuck it. I, I think. If they, if the song is pointing to the '70s and, like this, it seems like this aesthetic. Like they gotta change the aesthetic occasionally, right? It'd be cool. It'd be nice bit, to have a different, somewhat, little so, change of taste. It's funny you bring it up because everyone saw when people saw Solo and they saw the the gang of, of bounty hunters or whatever. They're like, they look like Destiny. Destiny looks like '70s sci-fi, <laughs> and so does Star Wars. Yeah. So there's a reason they look similar. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. It'd be interesting if yeah. they did go with 70s sci-fi because everyone would just say, it looks like Star Wars or it looks like Destiny now. And then they accuse it of ripping Destiny off. <laughs> Fallout's always had that 
sort of like 50s mm -hmm. style, much. like that, oh, that's, cathode ray tubes and like bolts and buttons. Yeah, but that's also yeah. that was the state of the world when it got blown out. So you're going to see a bunch of like rocket ships and like the atomic future. Like that, that's the alternate timeline that Fallout lives in. So they can't change the world aesthetically. They can't all of a sudden go, just kidding, the rocket ships are now. Zeppelins? I don't know what. <laughs> what's seventies? Well, I mean, like seventies is like in, dis in, disco in, and all. Yeah, that. yeah. But like but I'm saying, like in clacky robots with like pincher hands and visors. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of cheesy sci-fi. Yeah, r robots with one unicycle wheel that they right. roll around on. But all of all, it takes place in a weird alternate universe anyway, where maybe di disco seventies never happened. I was gonna say, you guys are probably right. I just want to hopefully, oh, no, I'm fine. just going to throw it out there and be like, why not? Let's yeah, see what right. happens. It would be nice. It was just like a different aesthetic than all the other Fallout games. Well, on that note, uh, provided that 76 is a multiplayer building sim or a survival sim or a collectible card game, it's a MOBA, it's a hero yeah, shooter, kill whatever. Myself. Goodness. Kill myself. If it's anything other than an action RPG, uh, are you guys okay with the Fallout brand expanding like that? Or to you, does Fallout mean first person action RPG? Good question. Yeah. I, I personally do not care. I think it's okay for studios to leverage their IP and try to do different things with it as long as I think I think we're in a we're in a cool state right now where you can do an offshoot and be experimental with it and then continue your main franchise, you know. Our, our studio's next to the parking lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got, you know, got to know you locked it. Um, <laughs> I don't like so while they're working on Elder Scrolls Six right now. It's kind of cool they can work on this game. It's which this happens a lot of times. I know with like Rockstar, they'll be developing a game, and a lot of those things are just prototypes that are going to go into the next game. So they could just be testing all the stuff that's going to be going into Elder Scrolls Six. Adam, I'm glad you brought that up because my theory on this. Uh, they would be crazy and, and stupid, but Bethesda is neither of those. Bethesda is a very, very smart company. I think they started making this online survival game when Rust and Ark and all that stuff were like kind of coming up and becoming popular. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're pulling an epic. I think they're going to make the game, release it, be like, it's online survival, and then in three months, go Battle Royale, bam, there it is. <laughs> uh, I think they're already working on it. Um, again, Bethesda is one of the smartest video game companies in the world. Mm -hmm. the, the decisions they make are so far beyond uh, typically, I'm like, man, they're like they're like master planners. They're like the mm -hmm. Joker. Um, and yeah. well, they're still putting out games too that shouldn't be working, like Doom and Wolfenstein. Yeah, and and they're selling, and people are buying them. They're good, and they're good games. Yeah. So I feel like they're trying to set up the battle royale. Yeah. I, I feel like that's coming. They're like how many, like major Bethesda games haven't been uh, a single player action RPG? I mean, that'd be cool. They're they're doing something different. Yeah. Finally. I mean, Doom had online, but barely. Yeah. Yeah, that was like... Multiplayer shooting. It is interesting, yeah. though, because Bethesda lately has been branding themselves as, like, the bastion of single-player gaming. Yeah. yeah. Not undeservedly. They've been releasing a lot of huge single-player products in a market where that's not considered to be a successful thing to do. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting for them to then release a branded offshoot that's chasing multiplayer trends. Because that yeah. does seem contrary to what they've established their marketing vehicle to yeah. be. I, I mean, co-op is still... Single player in a weird way. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So I think if if they're lever like, I imagine the most requested feature in any uh, Elder Scrolls game or Fallout is I want to play with my friend. Mm -hmm. Why can't I play with my friend? You play with two player or four player, something like or that. Like a co op. Yeah. Uh, that makes in, sense in their campaign. Yeah, it's so horrible. <laughs> so I'm just like <laughs> all the things. Like imagine you're playing Skyrim and then your friend's like, hey, let's play together, and you accept his invite, and then this dude in glowing laser armor descends from the clouds and lands. <laughs> It's like, what do we got to go do? I already did it. <laughs> yeah. He just hands you jewels and like a, a like a dragon jaw. He's like, what do you need? Do you need keys? Yeah. <laughs> Never like that happened in, in Borderlands. It happens in Diablo. It has <sighs> Destiny is got around it by like just really curbing the level curve, but then stats don't matter mm -hmm. um, because stats don't matter in Destiny. So I think uh, I think uh, that's probably. I think it's either going to be an online survival slash battle royale or what you're talking about, which is a single player slash co op campaign. Yeah, um, it's gonna I, be one of those two. I could see them doing something kind of cool too, where I mean, like for me personally, I hate going up an actual going up against a actual player. Um, so if like if they're in this survival mode, so good. I could see them Fuckers. doing something where like you're sort of like a, what's it called the drive avatar and Forza. Oh, oh right. that would be nice. That like my the player I'm creating is creating an AI in this world, mm -hmm. and that like that is a ghost of me that will exist. So that way. There's no real like latency issues where you're sh it's you and another guy shooting at each other. It's just you and your friend shooting at AI. I see. Yes. That would be nice. I, I 
I think you're onto something there. Who knows if they'll actually do that? I mean, especially if they're doing Battle Royale, then it's like... Well, no, it's one or the other. Like, yeah. they're not going to do both. Um, and I also don't think, uh, earlier, to your earlier point about breaking out of the genre, I don't, I don't think them doing an online survival or a Battle Royale is breaking out of their genre. I think it's actually just still the first person thing that you expect from Fallout, mm -hmm. but then it's just, it's like Call of Duty Battle Royale. Where everyone's like, oh yeah, they're like, how are you gonna play Call of Duty Battle Royale? You're just basically first person Call of Duty playing Battle Royale. Yeah, there's just more people. There's just more people, right? Yeah. You just gotta shoot a hundred people rather than thirty. Right. So um, I, I don't necessarily think that's breaking the genre. I think it's just you're just extending it. Yeah. And someone in chat brought up that Fallout has already expanded its genre significantly. I mean, it was a top-down oh, isometric yeah. RPG. Yeah. Then that's it was true. a turn-based tactical game. Then it was a dumb shooter that no one likes. Then it was a first-person <laughs> thing. Then it was uh, mobile. Uh, oh, yeah. Sea Monkey game. Shelter. Yeah, Shelter yeah. was a Fallout game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone forgets about that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's still earned a shitload of money. Um, and yeah, Adam, to your point about like testing games in advance, I mean, the, the building tools were in Fallout 4. Yep. Well, so, no, they were also in Skyrim. Yeah. It was, it was Skyrim, it was Skyrim DLC. Hearthstone or whatever? Hearth, hearth, hearth warm, or hearth, hearth, yeah, it was yeah. But that was just like, like you open a venue and you say, I want to build the, yeah, the you fireplace, and then it appears. You couldn't yeah. specifically <laughs> yeah. play stuff in the world. Right, right, but I'm just saying the building yeah, blocks right. were there. Yeah, yeah. And then the next game, they're like, remember that thing we did a little bit of? Here it is, but much bigger. Yeah. And then, I mean, honestly, the building stuff in Fallout 4 ain't bad. I, I don't works. like the, I don't like that stuff in games, and I spent way too much time on it. I think I should give it another try. Yeah, I was surprised by how <laughs> much time I spent. There's I'm um, bored with that I'm fucking game, man. Lawrence didn't well, like it at all. There's some really good DLC where um, you get, uh, I think it's called like home crafting, I think, but they give you items from like the Institute, so it's all that clean glass mm -hmm. and like stuff like that. So like my, my bottom half of my home was all like concrete and like industrial, and the higher you go up, it started to become glass, and oh. then like really nice ceilings and like, uh, nice floors, like this marble floor, and had an elevator that went all the way up, and like nice stairs. This was an Adam simulator. No, it, Sims, it yeah. was. Well, it was the, I was like crafting this whole like narrative where I'm like, it was basically like a giant loft. So then I'm like, oh, I'll put the shower right here, and then I even put like the toilet, and I like I blocked it, and put curtains up, and all this stuff. Where it's like these are things you don't use. And then I had it all there with the bed, and then some random settler just walked up and laid in my bed. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> all I made so were giant garbage piles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? It was great though, because I was. It, I don't remember the name. Crap on yeah. each other. I don't remember the name of the robot <laughs> DLC. Mr. Handy? Um, oh, Ada? Yeah, it was like... Ro my my was robot's like, name is Ada. I don't know what... But Because you got to populate all your towns with all these random people you find. But now, one of the DLCs, you just put like a little robot machine and you make these customized robots and they're just all... My towns are filled with robots, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't need human contact. <laughs> I like to, you get, you get an insight into what Jacob does in a video game yeah. when you go into one of his video yes, games. Yes, my beautiful yeah. robots. When you play like Sea of Thieves or something with Jacob or Destiny, yeah. and you like see his character and you're like, it looks really fucking so, weird. And like, he did something strange. I'm like, Jacob, how did you do that? So you can, and you he can, tells me. You can build at any of your settlements. Because I've, uh, yeah. I've only been building at the Commonwealth. The first one. Because that's the biggest one, I guess, right? Yeah, but, but I, I think what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to go and try to build like, a true tower, <laughs> like a, a monument to me. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you do. You go to any settlement, you build your stuff wherever. I want to see how high I can get it. You should. <laughs> Why fun. not? You're just playing Minecraft now. You realize that? Yeah. No, I know. They, I mean, they said when they announced that thing, they're like, "We're really inspired by Minecraft." Uh, I'm okay. Like, of course, yeah. Okay. You did it again, Todd Howard. You <laughs> magical genius, you. It's beautiful. Well, if uh, got another sponsorship coming up. If you if you uh, if you're planning on spending some time in the wasteland, whenever this game comes out, you're gonna need a wasteland potty. It's true. It's got to be tight. Mm -hmm. We saw we all saw Mad Max. There wasn't a doughy one among them. Actually, wait, yeah, there were a few. But anyway, Beachbody is sponsoring this podcast. Uh, they have a service called Beachbody On Demand, which is basically like Netflix but for fitness. So you can go on and, and pick from any number of uh, exercise types, or you can sort by the instructors if there's particular instructors you like. I have been doing the yoga workouts because I get my weightlifting in uh, at the gym and then uh, it turns out you need to do a lot more than just get huge to be healthy, which is frustrating. Uh, but James has been all been on a mobility kick and uh, based on a, a secret project that may or may not be happening later, I've decided I better get my stuff all loose and limber too. So it, it's pretty cool. You can just punch in yoga and then sort by the amount of time you have or the intensity that you want to do and then just pick a routine and go from there. Uh, I, I typically do a 30 minute one. It's just enough to make me terribly uncomfortable and all sweaty <laughs> in the middle of a Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> and if you're going to RTX or interested in it, you want that, you want that expo bod. Who knows uh, what happens at RTX stays there, unless you get pregnant. Uh, 
I could also stay there. I, I suppose STDs yeah. don't stay there either. <laughs> no, you carry those home too. Yeah. On the plane, don't sneeze on Treasuries, anybody. Treasuries, we call them. <laughs> <laughs> My sweet little mistake. <laughs> but signing up for Beachbody On Demand won't be a mistake. Not when you see those sweet abs popping out in the mirror. Uh, you can get access to the entire Beachbody On Demand, plat on demand platform for free. That includes all the workouts. They have nutrition guides, uh, support forums, all that stuff. Totally free for uh, trial membership. Uh, if you text DUDE to 303030, that's D-U-D-E to 303030. Try it out. Just tie some stretching. You'll be surprised. A couple weeks in, you'll be able to squat lower, move your arms around. Things might stop hurting. Mm. For me, it was just a big evaluation because I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily a loose individual. Usually pretty tight. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, doing yoga, man, I am just a solid brick of a human that really needs to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> Before our, our little trip yesterday, it was, uh, it was James, Elise, myself, and Omar waiting for uh, uh, Owen Peak, waiting for uh, Uber to come pick us up. And we're all just talking about all our problems, all our pains, and we're just like, I'm just like, my god, my hips are hurting the other day, and like, we're old. Yep. Elise is, uh, at least she's like, when it gets cold, my my ankle flares. Oh my <laughs> gosh, what is she, a 65-year-old prospector? Yeah. So that's I mean, the thing, yeah. soul of one is in there. <laughs> just, it's great getting older and realizing you have to stretch. I can't wait. You gotta, that's what you gotta maintain. You gotta maintain. That's, you don't, you don't keep your 20-year-old body for free. I'm gonna steal Jacob's physique by doing yoga. You're gonna suck out How old soul. are you, Jacob? 26. <laughs> all right. So that's uh, a yeah. years of age, the boy. <laughs> Free trial uh, to Beachbody On Demand. Text DUDE, D-U-D-E, to 303030 and try it out. I think you'll like it. It's uh, very convenient, and you can work out whenever you got a spare 15, 30 minutes. So DUDE, 303030, thank you, Beachbody, for the sponsorship. Uh, let's move on. All right, uh, Omar, I have a yes. question for you. Uh, a while ago, I made a really cool games journalism stinger I don't know if it's still in that folder. Oh, no. <laughs> if it is, you should play it. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll just start talking and you can roll it over when, it, when or if you find uh, it. I, I can do a quick segue from the, uh, no, it's not it's an old segue, but talking about Fallout. Sure. Uh, you should watch our drunk uh, E3 stream. Oh, yes, see our live you. reaction. Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll finally be like, oh, we were right yeah. or wrong. Who <laughs> cares? Love you, P. Hans. throw up. Thank yeah. you for reminding me. Yeah, uh, this coming Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and a little bit of Tuesday, depending on who's still able to function. Oof. Uh, we're going to be basically simulcasting all of the E3 conferences with commentary and playing a drinking game. Uh, so there, all the rules are already set. Uh, they're on a journal post on roostcheat.com. Uh, I guess I'll put that in the description of this podcast if you want to check it out. But yeah, we'd like it if you join us. We're going to watch all the, all the conferences, mm. drunkenly yell at them express our jubilation at the celebration of video games. And then in between all the conferences, we'll be playing some, some video games. It's our jubilation. It's always, it's always my favorite when Still we speculate drunk. and then the thing happens and then people tell us how wrong or right we were. Yeah. And when it's like, you, know, like you realize it was speculation. We didn't know. We we're just yeah. guessing. Yeah, we are literally guessing. We're not developers. Do they angrily <laughs> tell you you're right? Sometimes, oh, you'll get a lot of people who go, you called it, man, I'm like, I. I say a lot of things. I don't things. remember, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, it goes back to the whole spool thing where it's like, oh, he yeah. knew it, he knew No Man's Sky oh would be gosh. bad. It was like, I could have flipped a coin, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't don't point to this man as your messiah because he was only right about one thing. <laughs> your messiah. Oh yeah, <laughs> Parcel Moose just posted the link to the thing in chat, so if you're watching live, please check that out. Gracias. If not, check it out in the description. Yeah, that does remind me, somebody somebody tweeted me and they're like, you know what, you totally called Detroit too human. I was like, what, how? Called what? Detroit, that it would come out? Apparently Detroit. I was joking and saying it was a game about, what if robots had feelings? And he was like, you called it, man, that's what it's about. <laughs> like, of course that's what it's about. It was called Detroit Become Human. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't like, I wasn't going out on a limb on that one. Hey, man, hey man I'll take the credit when I can get it. Good one, strong. Speaking of credit, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself a little pat on the back because it's time for some games journalism. I'm gonna I'm gonna take those video game fat cats down a peg right now. <laughs> is there a graphic? Video game fat cats. Yeah. What are you I talking about? I don't think there's a graphic. Big no, video there's, game. There's no, no graphic. It's all right. Well, I, I Omar probably never didn't find it. That's I probably fine. never copied it he to the. He didn't look. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Where would that right be? Now? Hold on. I, I, okay. Here I'll look. Uh, I got here like shuffling through papers. Like I don't know if it's here, guys. Just moving things around. I don't think it. Wait, hold on. Oh. Oh wait, it would be an alpha channel one anyway. Oh. Yeah, it's totally not there. Damn it! Ooh. Ah, uh, there was a cool, cool guitar riff on that one too. Oh well. <laughs> and an explosion. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> I think I more put up. Who cares? Uh, it's it's time to get our credit. Prove that we're on on the side of the consumers, pro consumer. That's us. That's People us. don't say that anymore. Prosumers. Yeah. Pro well, that's different. 
Prosumer's different. Rockstar's fucking us, guys. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Why? Fucking us again. Uh, so, uh, which is weird because Rockstar routinely did, like de- delivers the hugest games and like, absurdly... That we played for hundreds and hundreds yeah. of hours. But Bruce! <laughs> they recently announced, uh, this is on the Rockstar Newswire. Let me throw this up on the old big display over here. Bang. Yeah. Whoa. Special edition, ultimate edition, and collector's box. That's cool. It's cool, but it's not because they're fucking us. Uh, <laughs> the special edition has exclusive content. Right? Whoa! And it's more okay. like usually you'd expect the normal stuff, like ooh, a dappled black thoroughbred, whatever, man. Talisman, mm-hmm. med- medallion, gameplay bonuses. Who cares? Gameplay boost, cash bonuses, and discounts. I don't give a shit. This is it right here. Uh, the bank robbery mission and gang hideout in story mode get exclusive access to a bank robbery mission in which Arthur and a couple of fellow gang members come up with a daring plan to break in and rob the bank of the southern town of Rhodes. Elsewhere, the Del Lobos gang has taken over a hacienda, clear this gang's hideout to rob their stash for a lucrative take. How dare they <laughs> hide content from us in this way? <laughs> that could have been in the game, and they chose to yank it out and make it yeah. an extra $20 for this special edition. Maybe it'll just eventually come. They're robbing us. Maybe like it's, it's exclusive for a month or something, and then uh, after, afterwards everybody gets access. I, I get exclusive, it. Exclusive, Bruce? Did I just hear you say that? When you... <laughs> because they're not done fucking us. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah! Wait, no, that works. I mean, that's not quite it, but it'll work. Oh, it's a hot topic. Yeah. I hate that graphic so much. That's the worst. Uh, There's also this bullshit over here. What? (laughs) Click it all. Hold on. So this this is a Sony store entry for the Red Dead Redemption 2 Ultimate Edition. And if you scroll on down here enough, you see this little, this little hot ticket they tried to sneak past us. PlayStation exclusive, place like content first on PlayStation 4, details to follow. Can you believe it? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I can yeah. because they paid more money for it. Sounds it's, about right. It's been going on for years. You yeah. guys, you're not outraged enough. This is absurd. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> I had an Xbox, played Halo 1, and they're uh-huh. going to pull this on me? Yes. Phil Spencer, where are you? Pow. Yeah! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Fucking burn him up! <laughs> I, I, I'm... I understand the anger or the uh, upsetness. It's bullshit. Uh, well, for the, um, I, I don't like when people tell you we have actively chosen to remove this thing from a certain thing of a game. Mm. No matter how little or big it is, it never looks good. Yeah. Of course. Um, even if, even if they're like, hey boss, game's done. We got some time. We can create some extra missions. Yeah. We'll those in for the collector's one. Even if that is how the story went. Um, it just doesn't look good. So, I, under, I understand business is being business are doing their thing, but it's like, at some point you gotta be like, guys, you, you can't you can't spin this right. And it's that's kind of always a tough sell. Um, even though it could be people just voting with their wallets, you know, and- Well, I don't know if they- They'll, they'll, they'll just buy it because they wanna buy it. Do they care though? Like, I mean, think about it that way. The PlayStation exclusive, <sighs> They're like, okay, well, the largest console in the world gets yeah. the exclusive. I mean, the the you know? vocal people out there will make it. They will be very angry. Yes, of course. Um, will like it make it, will it make a dent in anything Rockstar is doing? Probably not. And get this, get this, <laughs> the collector's box doesn't even have the game in it. What? Yeah, it's a oh, separate thing. You're... It doesn't have a physical copy. Yeah, oh. they could have put a game in there. They could have put two, and they didn't. Is How called... is that? That's not cool. Does it has a digital. Copy? No, nothing. It's just oh, a box. nothing. It's just a box. Yeah, oh, okay. you gotta buy it next to the game. Oh, oh. that's it's actually the, kind of nice. Yeah, somebody wants all the little doohickeys and Some stuff. Some people like to buy that stuff separately. I want the game in mind though. Yeah, I want two games. All right, so well, there, I'm, that's bullshit. There's ah! no, so there's no version of this with <laughs> yeah, the game. Right. You just have to buy the game. Uh, well, put it in yourself. No, that's specific. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> just open it and put it in. I got it. And then you, go, you just you erase your memory for <laughs> thirty seconds. Ago. Oh, oh! <laughs> thanks, Rockstar. Thank God, it's what if it doesn't fit? Did you think about that? No. Who are you talking to? Because I don't. I'm not gonna. Now buy you're this. angry on the other side of this. Yeah, I mean, this is cool. It doesn't work anymore. That was a puzzle. <laughs> oh, wait, a is that like an? It is an in thing. It didn't open in a new tab. All right, there. So the, yeah, the collector's box available exclusively from select retailers. I guess not the ones I go to, Rockstar. Which exclusive retailers <laughs> are gonna have it? Uh, yeah, Red Dead Redemption Two sold separately. Can you believe that? That Se- is kind of weird. Separately, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna agree with Bing. Ah, I got there him again. Go. That's my hot topic. I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> gonna agree with the internet and be. That's kind of strange. Why would they just put the game in there? No. Uh, I only have a theory based on working in retail, which is that, uh, and it gets dumb. But there's items per transaction. 
Uh, the more things you sell per transaction, oh, the okay. better a retail store looks. So if you can sell the game next to a big ass collector's box, that's two items instead of one. Got it. Also, uh, they only have to stock one box, not two boxes. They have to stock the two boxes anyway. They did, still got to sell the game separately. The GTA. No, I mean, like they, a, they don't have to have a PS4 edition? version of the box and an Xbox I version. Think of the it box. must have. It I must don't remember have, what it right? was. Did GTA Five have a collector's edition? I don't remember. I don't think so. Wow. Let me think. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is weird because I know Rockstar will always send us stuff like blimps and. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, yeah like clubs, fun stuff. Special? No, it does. Special edition and collector's edition. What did it have? Starting for pre-order. I mean, it came with a blimp, right? Yeah. There it is. Didn't get the blimp. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, special. But it, it didn't. It didn't come in like. I thought it had GTA Online wasn't there yet. Did it come in a steelbook, blueprint map, ability boost, yeah, stunt plane trials, but, trials. But it didn't come in like Michael's head or something, you know. Additional like, weapons. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, it came with a map. Huh. Man, that was a long time ago. So was, I, 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 I'm being fuzzy on my history of Rockstar stuff. I don't oh, think they no. typically do the big There's all the collector's stuff. box. There's yeah. a box. Like right all, there. all, all the hundred fifty bucks. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, is they a, did. Is that a pillow? What did it come that? with the game? It did. Oh yeah, safe deposit box. I remember that now. Okay. It came with the game. There! Uh-oh. Rockstar! <laughs> don't, don't point at me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, d- despite my very true and genuine outrage, it's there There are people who are legit mad that like, they have, like you said, Adam, the appearance of content being cut from the retail package mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. to be slotted into DLC, but of all the companies to accuse of cutting content from a game, Rockstar's not the one. I was gonna say, they're constantly giving us free stuff. Well, yeah. and just the game, as it ships out the door, is it's, four or five games worth of game already. It's gonna be a lot of stuff. So, I, uh, all, all I can say is when this sort of stuff happens, you're giving CD Projekt Red so much ammo. Oh, yeah. Like, you're only <laughs> helping uh, Cyberpunk right now, when they're gonna be like... All the DLC is they're, free. They're, they're gonna do a Cyberpunk smug little, they're gonna do a help. smug thing and be like, look, it comes in that woman's head, and the game's in there, <laughs> yeah. and then like you'll see like Red Dead in the back, and like someone like a Polish dude taking a shit on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like great, let them have it. I don't know. So I'm, I'm glad you brought up the best game. That's ever. just that's interesting that they would announce this. This game's how many months away? October 25th. That's yeah. crazy. I guess they're ramping up their their advertising campaign. So you also get GTA Online bucks when you pre-order it, which is kind of oh, interesting. How much? Really? So it depends on the edition that you pre-order. Yeah. Most expensive one. All my money. The ultimate edition pre-order, you get $2 million in GTA. Oh my gosh. No, it's not. Actually, actually, it's not that much in GTA. It's <laughs> like a car. I think, I think it's just a lot of stuff to try and tip you over. If you, if you know you're going to buy it anyway, and everyone's mm. going to buy it, you might as well pre-order it. Wait, hold on. If I buy two, do I get $4 million? Sure. Here's the. I don't think it's a good three. return. You could just buy GTA money. While we're speculating. Help me out with yeah. this math here. Do we, do we think <laughs> this game... <laughs> Because GTA, if I remember correctly, GTA Five sold a billion dollars worth of games in three days. Something like that. I believe. Fuck. I think Red Dead Redemption Two will be larger. I think so. No. I, can... I think it will be larger. There are more consoles out. There are more people playing games out. I th- and it's I, I think the, the, the uh, hype has been building. I, I, if this isn't, then GTA Six will be. But sure. Uh, um, but I, I'm not. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. I think GTA is more universally loved, and it is a stronger IP. Red yeah, Dead it is. is. It is. Red Dead is still. I mean, really, only say what you will. It has one game behind it. Mm-hmm. Red Dead Revolver did not yes. count. Yeah, yeah. If, if there's anyone who's going like, I skipped out on Red Dead Redemption because I was waiting for this one. Yeah. Because I was a Revolver fan, and I, I, you don't exist. <laughs> You're not real. Um, but I'm saying like. GTA 5 is a long-running franchise, You're right. You're and right. it associated with so many positive memories. Like the first game I got on my PS2, GTA 3. I'm not. That's not me saying that, but like it has this legacy. Red Dead doesn't oh, have it. Shit. All right, uh, don't so. get me wrong. I think it's going to do well, but it's not going to do GTA 5. Big. Well, yeah. yeah, and and as a point of comparison, yeah, GTA 5 has also been on two different generations of consoles and PC. Holy shit! But right. GTA 5, 90 million copies. <laughs> Red Dead, as of 2015. 14 million copies. I was actually wow. comparing the launches, not the life, lifetimes of the yeah. games. Oh yeah, I, I think it will be a very positive launch. I think this is actually a really good time in a console's life cycle for it to come out. When you're starting to get, this is like the God of War time, you know, when a console is like matured enough. The God of War time. Well, I'm, I'm just saying like. I remember them well. Okay, so like, well it's like, a, you know, a launch game for PS2 was that fireworks bullshit. A and then uh, yeah. some like the RPG. Bouncer. Yeah, and the bounce like real garbage stuff. Like just, just bottom of the barrel. Tekken Tag, yeah, Two? but still, like a simple yeah, fighting it wasn't game. Great. 
it wasn't a while until something like God of War came out, or yeah. um, what's like a bigger, you know, like a Resident Evil, or like a, a Devil Grand May Theft Cry. Grand Theft Auto 3 and Final Fantasy X and Metal Gear Solid 2 were like the, the first they, big hitters. They came out later in the console generation, yeah. so now it's like, I think the, the consoles are finally at this mature point where the games are just going to be really good. You get all the PS4 Pros, and Xbox One Xs, and stuff yeah. too. Yeah. Can like or whatever the next thing they're going to announce. Have they yeah. <laughs> PS4 Pro drone? If One X is like, Ball if you can play Red Dead 2, 4K 60 FPS on One X. Oh, 60 FPS? Oh, hey. drone. That'd be cool. Oh, drone. Yeah, I don't know about that either. <laughs> anyway, maybe that'd be cool. Maybe if you duct tape two of them. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Network them together? Uh, Adam, I'm glad you brought up Cyberpunk or CD Projekt. God fucking damn it. Yep. It's another week, another headline. <laughs> I made it. Yes. <laughs> I didn't even have to cue him. That's great. That's my favorite when that guy's talking. Got it, Omar. What's he saying? He's like, so I, I can still grab him? Or? <laughs> Play it again. <laughs> All right. Uh, the headlines never stop. Uh, headlines? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing but the hard hitting. More sim- like blips on a radar. <laughs> yeah, I know. This weekend is from Alt Care Car Who. Cements what we already knew. CD Projekt Red will show Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay trailer at E3. Which which press conference? Uh, well, we don't know that. You tell me. It's a man you uh, guess. outside that Mexican restaurant shouting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I honestly don't think it'll be part of a press conference. Oh, you don't? No. no. I, what? I don't think it will be. Whose press conference? Nobody it's got to be well, Cyber Sony. Or I, think, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it could, Microsoft or Sony, right? It could be Microsoft or Sony. Even though, yeah, because they could come out and be like, "Come on." Uh, well, they Sony, haven't announced if it. anybody, but okay. probably yeah. not. They'll, probably not. Well, because they'll announce some like bullshit partnership of like <laughs> Sony gets us as indie developers. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're nothing like Rockstar. <laughs> just, <laughs> just shit on them on stage. Yeah. Will, will Cyberwatch end after that trailer comes out? Oh, Maybe. No. There's probably still going to be a lot. Not trailer, no. When the game comes out. Oh, okay. Because okay. we'll all be too busy playing. Going to keep watching. So here's the thing. Fallout 76, I can almost guarantee is going to come out this year. Probably. Because Bethesda does that now. That's where they announce safe, it, it comes out. Mm-hmm. When do you think Cyberpunk's going to come out? Two? No, wait. Two years. Two years? One year. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to say... I'm not going to say 2019. I'm going to say 2020. Beginning of 2020. Okay. It's going to get pushed. It's going to okay. pushed. We're getting closer to 2077 or whatever. The- <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe they'll they'll announce a release date for late 2019. That's what, that's get what I think is going to happen. Yeah. It's going to get delayed. I think I think it's going to they're going to announce I'm it for 2019. I'm not going to play this fucking game until 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Which means we're going to be doing this for the next two years yeah, on we are. the podcast. <laughs> uh, so this is this hot scoop here. Uh, this is from Alt Car, Alt Character, whatever. Uh, quote, Bethesda has swooped in with an almost two-day long stream and finally revealed Fallout 76 at the end of it, but some people knew what is going to happen hours before the announcement. This is a real journalist this here. This is real barely, hot journalist. barely write it. <laughs> One such individual is Soma on Reddit, who has posted that Fallout 76 would be the reveal about four hours before Bethesda did. Ooh. It gets, good, it gets deeper. His post was first met with sarcasm, but after it proved to be true, I can only imagine his inbox exploded with questions. <laughs> Among those questions was whether CD Projekt Red would be showing a gameplay trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 during E3 conference, and Soma replied with a simple, yes. (laughs) Yes. On top of gameplay confirmation, he also replied to another related question, if it will be a showcase behind closed doors or an official trailer. According to Soma, this will be an official trailer. I told you. Available to a wider audience. Maybe, do you ever think that maybe I might be Soma? Yeah, I was going to say. (laughs) You're the inside track, Bruce, you knew it? You said it was going to be at a press conference. Yeah, that's what, that's what it says right there. No, it, it sounds the, like they're just going to upload a trailer yeah, this, to their YouTube channel. Yeah, this says channel. Uh, yeah, oh. a, a gameplay trailer and then behind yeah. closed doors press. That's what I mean. It, it sounds nice it when they're sound, like, it sounds way an cooler. official release, which means... They put it up on a YouTube channel? Yeah, basically. We do that every day. <laughs> I mean, we don't do trailers, thank God. Yeah, we don't do cool <laughs> cyberpunk trailers. We should. Could you imagine how many viewers we get if we made Cyberpunk 2077? Yeah, yeah, it says, we'll be showing a gameplay trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 during E3 conference. That, so that's yeah. during the whole E3 thing. Yeah. You know? within not, a, within oh, come a, on. Within no. a week window, we will upload a video file. <laughs> yeah. Come is what on. This translates no, to. during the E3 conference. The, that's the whole thing, though. Come on. So, you know, technically the conferences happen before E3 even starts. <laughs> so, here, here's what might happen the conferences will start, they, they'll upload it, and then they'll have them come out at like Sony or Devolver yeah. or someone's like, Oh, I and see, be yeah. like, like we have announced an exclusive partnership. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Blah 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 blah. We've done this every year. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's new anymore. <laughs> Why are you like surprised? It would be this. Yeah, it would be like Cyberpunk DLC yeah. will come three days early yeah. to every PlayStation in the well, world. This is what happens at Ubisoft. They're like, 
uh, you know, Sony does their, or so Ubisoft does their press conference, like, behold, the new Assassin's Creed, you get a top hat. And like, <laughs> and like, that's cool. But then so, Sony does their press conference, ah! and Sony's like, the PS4 is the most powerful thing, right? Get out of here, Ubisoft, and prove it. And they're like, check it out, the new top hat game <laughs> with Assassin's. Yeah, no, you're right. Look at it run. That's it. <laughs> We'll see you later. Come by the Ubisoft booth. Welcome to the jaded E3 dude suit. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Toby Turner? <laughs> E3 is something that Toby I... Toby Turner. <laughs> I was a little... A few <laughs> years behind. On that. Freezes oh, on his mic. Well, well, they, they uh, it's Aisha Tyler now, Reed, Yeah. Who's, well, she has only been getting better. And Joel McHale. Mm-hmm. He hasn't been in a while. I know, it's because he got, he got strung up for the... Yeah. VGAs or VGXs. VGXs. Mr. Yeah. Caffeine got yanked out with a comical stage hook. <laughs> <laughs> no one remembers him. Not everyone's as cool as the rest in peace Steve Jobs, you know? like I think you look at that and you're like, I mean, the guy's a master. Well, people people wanted it. They emulated Steve Jobs. They were right. trying to be Steve Well, I was, I was telling you earlier, I was watching the... Um, it was like the Computex uh, Intel keynote or yeah, whatever because yeah. they, they announced like a 28 core oh yeah yeah processor five gigahertz one yeah and it was like dear god but you watch the press conference and the guy's like we got an M1 board on a P- board t- p- yeah. I can't say the words <laughs> yeah. of the thing he's trying to sell because it's so fucking complicated that's right it's an 8600 XT on a TI 42 <laughs> yeah, well then he was like yeah yeah right come on let's do for that for all those numbers I said or it's like you know Apple comes out and they're like it's a watch and I was yeah. like Jesus Christ, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These words make sense. <laughs> you've, won, you've won a watch. But then right? I, I just I love the video game press conferences because like on. there's some guy who goes out there and he's like, I need to be enthusiastic so the audience will be enthusiastic. And it's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but they've never done it in their, in their lives. Well, they're they always never, really nervous. They never smiled in front of anyone yeah. <laughs> in their Those entire life. Developers. And then they get up there and they're like, like get, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get, get the guy from all the, uh, the Chevy ads who's just Welcome like. Welcome to the new um, Cyberpunk. You, know, you just you need an emotional stone. Just somebody just goes up there and goes, "This is the new Assassin's Creed. It has multiplayer." <laughs> <laughs> you can wear a top you. you can wear a top hat. Thank you very much. Yeah. Coming up next, it's rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> rabbits. Cut to somebody crying. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what was it last year? Uh, the whole Ubisoft thing. There was there was a whole like let's all get up on stage and say fuck you to Vivendi. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Well, because they were like, yeah. here's Beyond Good and Evil 2. That's not oh. coming out anytime soon. But hey, we're going to announce it because we're probably going to get bought out by a giant evil mega corporation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they still stopped it somehow. So good yeah. for them. Maybe good they're going to be like really smug this year. <laughs> I hope we so. We told you. Yeah, smoking <laughs> cigarettes. And we're not getting bought. Floor. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is canceled. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. It was never going to be real to begin with. Did you see that shit? We're announcing... Four Assassin's Creeds. <laughs> They're all out right now. You're gonna buy them. <laughs> They're all mobile games. <laughs> they already did that. They're all on the sort DS. Of. What was that? What was that one for Assassin's Creed Three where you could like make your boat do stuff and it would give you wheat? That was oh, I played that. Yeah, that was he, Black Flag. He yeah. did that. Well, I remember Adam talk, talking to me at lunch about it. Yeah. yeah You're like, it's so cool. You can send your pirate ships out and they get you get more well, stuff. Because, I was because, like, what? Well, yeah, because it would link with your game. So like, if you're at, if you're at like a family thing, you do this. He's just like, wow. fire, fire, fire. And then like, oh, yeah, you go back to the game and then you yeah. have a bunch of money and stuff. Yep. It's waiting for you. And it's then you get to make the boats bigger. I agree with you. <laughs> they definitely looked, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They Jacob. looked at Adam and Jacob Damn for it. sure. He got a high five for that. <laughs> I killed all the legendary boats without all that crap. Don't need it. Who cares? Oh, man. Those boats were very there, difficult. There was that one at the end, like Crazy Man of War or whatever. I yeah. only played it for a few hours. That was that was the last Assassin's Creed that like, I played thoroughly. I remember I, really, I was like, man, I really like this game a lot. Uninstalled. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that's what happened. Because I, I was like, I didn't care. I, I heard Origin was Origins. Origins. Oh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah, I'm I playing it, through it right now because I started it and stopped it. Is it good? We um, we did it for that gameplay video, but I never. I'm, really en- I'm enjoying that. it a lot. People like, say I really it's like good. It. Yeah. <laughs> People say, well, I mean, I got to go back to Far Cry. It's got a good main character. Oh, yeah. He's a little weird. Uh, what's his name? Bayek. Bayek, yeah. It, he goes one. from like no. murderous rage to like playing with his kid in about 30 yeah. seconds. <laughs> he's a he's a mercurial one, that Bayek. Do they like is that a consistent thing with his character? Um, I mean, I've only been going through like some of the serious stuff. But yeah, he seemed like with all the people that he's friends with. He seems like really cool, he's super but then he's like happy. a super murderer. Yeah, man. and then he beats people to death with rocks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just he has he has some good screams. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's a very good screamer. Yeah, he's just popping some dude's skull in half. <laughs> <laughs> so my he's like, come on, let's go throw the I, ball around. I've been meaning to bring this one because no one's ever no one's ever talked about this, but I should look it up because I don't care anymore. But in uh, Assassin's Creed 
two, I want to say, Altair, fi- or Da Vinci figures out, no, I figured out a way to make the knife so you don't have to cut off your finger. Because mm-hmm. that was the whole thing. And then in Brotherhood, the next one, they're like, thank you for joining the Brotherhood. Let's chop your finger off. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, but you didn't do it. He's like, no, nah, I'm cool assassin. Like, I, I'm head assassin. I don't, I don't cut fingers off. <laughs> but everyone else. Like, yeah, there, I thought Ezio did remove that from the assassin order of having to chop your finger off. They, they, they mean, like branded their fingers. Oh, is that all it was? I thought they were chopping the finger off. I think they were just branding their fingers okay. on that finger. I mean, that's back it's on been Xbox. a long time since I've played that game. Okay, though, so. if it was a brand, that makes sense. But if they were just like... Just like staring me in the face, yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, "Good job, everyone!" And the guy's like, "We don't have to Thanks. do this." Yeah. But they yeah. even did, they did that in that that <laughs> dumb movie, oh. with chopping the fingers off. They did, but that was back before Assassin's Creed Two. Yeah, when they're doing the flashback stuff. I think in so. the, movie? the movie, the wait, the the. The, the Blu-ray movie, or I the saw Michael that Fassbender movie. one. Oh, yeah, they he, chopped his finger off. It was very brown and dark, but I'm pretty sure they chopped his finger off in a weird that flashback. At all. I don't remember a lot of things. I saw it once, movie, and I know the Animus was like Optimus Prime's cock thrown him yeah. around, basically. <laughs> Just do this. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a weird movie. Fighting ghost people. See, there's a Bumblebee trailer. Oh boy, Stand- whoa! Standalone Bumblebee. I've, looks- I've heard about this. It's actually, it's probably gonna be a good Transformers movie. Ugh. No, because they've be, all been good. It's gonna be like an Iron Giant sort of situation. What? Yeah, it's like a well, because it's just Bumblebee. There's no, it's not like oh, and he can't talk aside from his radio. I, so this is what except I, do. I think they he gave him a voice box or something. Remember when I, they talked? He talked in five, and he sounded like Zen uh, Zenyatta. Yeah, he did. Uh. <laughs> okay, all right. Read the, read <laughs> yeah, the yeah, ad. Thank read you. The ad read, please. I've been waiting in that red so light bad. for a while. Please. <laughs> Uh, robots don't have to shave, but we do. <laughs> there's, your, there's your segue. This podcast is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club, which delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Uh, despite shave in the title, they'd like you to know that they offer a wide range of bathroom products that you can get via subscription or just in a box when you need them. That ranges from uh, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, tooth- toothpaste, <laughs> hair gel, and even little booty wipes that make that crack all nice and sparkly. They're peppermint, and uh, it tastes like church in your butthole. That's how I would describe it. Whoa. Gives you a little perk all week long. Uh, for five bucks, you can get their daily essential starter set, which comes with a lot of the products I just listed. As body cleanser, one wipe Charlie's, uh, uh, shave butter, which if you use foam, shave butter is it's basically a lubricant for your face, but it's clear, so you can actually see what you're shaving, and it's easier to not miss spots, and it washes away a lot cleaner. Um, you can add in shampoo, toothpaste, anything else you need for the bathroom. Uh, the starter kit is only $5. Also comes with the six blade executive razor. If there's anything more executive than six blades, I'd like to know it, but it doesn't exist, so don't even try. Uh, you can keep and keep the blades coming for a few dollars a month and various other items also can be uh, subscribed to. But that's all in the $5 uh, starter kit, uh, the daily essential starter set. You can find that at dollarshaveclub.com slash dude. I've actually been, I have made it a habit to get every boring little essential that I need for my life, like trash bags and stuff like that, on the internet. Who needs to go outside? It's dumb. Let them bring it to me. Well, that's coming up on the post show. Uh, Adam just showed some fan art. So why not do the same with uh, soaps and wipes? Uh, you can try it out too. It's a pretty, pretty cheap package to get in the 21st century method of living. So stay inside, wipe your butt. Those are the two two pieces of advice I'd give to you. Also go to dollarshaveclub.com slash dude, check out all the products they have to offer, and uh, check one more boring thing off your list. Who needs to go to stores? It's dumb. Next, uh, next just shove a tube down your throat. Let let it pipe nutrients down in there, and just let robots he's scrub you trying, with. He's trying to do cyberpunk is what he's trying to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it, Lawrence thinks that that's what's gonna happen to us in the next 10 years, and it's just, not. Just, he just needs to come out, get a seven out of ten, and move on. <laughs> That's it. You go. That was good. <laughs> I had fun, I guess. Have some weird multiplayer. Yeah. So once more, that's dollarshapeclub.com slash dude for the uh, five dollar starter set. Check it out. Your old, your old pal Lawrence always has a clean butthole. I want you to think about that. Mm. No. Mm. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. Let's let's nut hard real quick. Uh, I got pee so bad. Yeah, I know. We're at we're up on ninety minutes. Sorry. Sorry. Bang. My favorite part is when it does the graphic does this thing. Then, yeah, because it's nice. flying out of the tube. <laughs> it took me like five minutes to keep framing that. Actually, it was way less than that. No eases. Nah, I can't hit the F9 key. So, who was here last week? I think I was. I was here. 
Okay, so you guys I remember plants? Oh, yeah. All right. When so this is the hero that was trying yeah. to blackmail. I don't need the rundown on this. Yeah, blackmail take Voltron. I'll give you. I'll give you remember? the. Whoa, it's awesome. I'll give you the skinny. So apparently, <laughs> the the studio who animates Voltron allowed people to tour their offices, and somebody posted like confidential materials, like a storyboard they weren't supposed to see, and the studio was like, "Guys, please just take that down." A lot of people did. Except for Clance fourteen, our oh, hero. No. So he ripped. He ripped the, the, the like of photos. Himself. Yeah. <laughs> he ripped the photos and uh, refused to take them down unless the studio canonized his shipping of two characters. So hold on, it appears oh that my. Gosh. Yeah, unless the studio basically like. Uh, succumb to his whims mm -hmm. of changing their story of Ultron oh my for clients. goodness. That's yeah. amazing. To canonize what? My, my cursor so, has disappeared. And also kind of terrible. It's a, it's a bold move, it's Cotton. Bold. Let's see if it Where works it? out. Oh, oh, there she is. All right, thank you. All right, let me uh, <laughs> it's a bold move. close that yeah, out. Give me right 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 dodgeball. Yeah, of course. All right, so there are there are screen caps of the... Did it disappear again? No, it's right there. How? There it is. Okay. It's really hard. You're going blind a little bit. <laughs> you seem like hunched over his laptop, <laughs> staring at his screen, like clam. So yes, uh, hello from Studio Mir. We sincerely ask you to delete the repost regarding the Voltron confidential materials. A Studio Mir is in legal, serious legal issues with DreamWorks Animation as a result. So Studio Mir was getting fucked by DreamWorks. <laughs> they're probably getting, they're out to get sued. Oh my god, <clears throat> millions of dollars. And Clance fourteen, dropping in hot, saying, "Make Clance <laughs> canon, and then I'll take them down from my Tumblr." Blog's not dedicated to Voltron also had the leak. So he's basically Bang. like, <laughs> other people are doing it, but oh I'm going to keep God. doing it yeah. until you make these two dudes fuck for real. That's the thing. You don't, you can't give in to the terrorists because then the other blogs who are hosting it can make any crazy demands they want for Voltron. Yep, the terrorists win. Yeah. Clients wins. Did sure. you know that that show's coming up on season six? What is Voltron? Yeah. No. How did you know that? I saw the ad for the trailer today. Weird. Oh. It was like, season six is like, well, that show started like two years ago. What happened? Yeah. Time flies. Maybe a season is like three episodes. Robots fly. <laughs> All right, that's going to go up against if wishers were horses. Oh, my. Uh, oh, look at that gif. There so, it goes. Ah! Oh, it's horrifying. Yeah, it's a woman sick. turning into a horse. Just yeah. one letter can make such a difference. Welcome to if wishers were horses. The website, it's hyphenated, website, dedicated to the human equine shapeshifting. If you think this interests you, if you're merely curious, please enter. If the notion of transforming into an animal does not appeal, enter, then enter, you'd really enter, be enter, 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 enter. So, yeah. I, I was in when I saw the horse game. <laughs> uh, so Ooh. here's the unicorn of Aspen Falls Whoa. and a variety of links. In Beautiful. A chromed out sort of anal bead. So ring. click one of them. I know what I'm yeah. voting for. Yeah. Do you guys bibliography. Want stuff, methods and advice. Why? Myth and folklore. Artwork. 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 Yeah. Oh, there's hooves. That's a good idea. Yeah. There's some hooves there. Oh, is that like uh, nudity? Okay. Sexual that's situations. Fine. That's fine. Uh, do it. Any, any of them. Do it. Ah. Stable mates. Oh, the donkey, donkey room. room. Uh -oh. Oh, no. Dignity. That's. What is the underwear wrapped around there? It's Actually, like, we can show that. I think. What about the, the women's? Oh. oh, we definitely can't show that. Help me. Horse tatas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those are not what horse tits. Oh, look carrot like. cake. What My the hero. hell? Three. Oh, it's Jasmine from Aladdin. There was a Jasmine too, but I never really liked it. Oh, that makes sense. Let me click on this. Oh, oh no. Then we can show that. Stable relationship. Ah! Ha, 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 ha. Can we vote now? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's so much more to see here, though. I yeah. mean, I, I, really I already like, have it bookmarked, so. I, re I really like this did something that, uh, that the art, that weird art like that never does, is sucks. they couldn't pull the pants up past the tail. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, oh God. Oh, she's peeking out there. A horse bush <laughs> going on. Uh, well, whoever's editing this is going to have to blur this. So. What? There's an anime girl popping off a horse face. Hey. Oh, one out of 14. This is a whole anthology. Wow. Donkey costumes, costumes are okay. Spells are us. Yeah. She's reading the spell there. That's a weird. Oh, it's a toy. Oh, oh. Uh oh. Oh, let's Cold. see where this goes. I hope she's of age. She's already so aroused. I hope she's of age. Oh, this she's is going to get worse. And we close. There's it. still <laughs> 10 more pictures of this story. Man, it, it, she's putting on the horse costume. That's yeah. actually not in a sexual situation. Yeah, how does that oh. work? How does her leg turn into a horse leg? She's just putting on those legs. No, the, she's putting them on. Yeah, it's an outfit. Next. So that's that's just next. That's the butt plug. Popping that on there. Okay. Ooh. Omar, <laughs> have covered. you also thrown up in your mouth a little bit? <laughs> yeah, just... I get to look at this all over again later on. Yeah, you get to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I want oh, God. put it on. This is such a good avatar. It's like yeah. annihilation. <laughs> yeah, or you're something. right. It is. It's a really good, good Twitter, Twitter profile. Avatar. Oh, pop on those hooves there. There we go. You got a horse. 
All right. Oh, and all the all the seams just pop pop that's, close. Oh, that's because she's turning into a horse. Oh my god. Oh no, she can't get it off. She can't I'm get stressing. it off. Click. This is click. I want to find out what happens. I'm trying. Okay. Oh, oh no. Oh, click again because she's probably happy with it. But that's the end. No, Wait, there's one that more. That was 13, yeah. See? I told you. Oh, no, no. She stressed out like District 9. She oh, went okay. to the donkey sanctuary. That's, yeah. that's what yeah. happened to Vickers Van Der Yeah, and I hit the finish <laughs> button because you just came on yourself. <laughs> oh, it's hot. <laughs> I just oh, want to go to the bottom. Wildly scary. Oh, what's this? Someone like Jasmine. Has, nope, ooh. that's bad boobsies. Posty. It's just boobs. Ooh, gross. <laughs> Old <laughs> website animations. <laughs> yeah. Those are animations. Oh, animations. I want to see these Morphing for software. sure. God, God I can't click it fast. 1997. It's uh, loading. Give that it a sec. That domain was, cannot be there I was anymore. six years old. Hold on. Yeah, unicorn-dream.co.uk. And now that you're older, how has the website changed? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hold up. Who's soda? Time's up. That's soda. Yeah, we should vote. I have a meeting to go uh, to. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh there she no. goes. Oh, no. Yes. Cool. Curse <laughs> YouTube's inability to animate thumbnails. This, Ugh, awesome. this, this would be the highest viewed podcast ever if we could animate the thumbnail. Possibly. Mm-hmm. All right, let's throw it to a vote. Horse. And by the way, oh, horse. Horse. oh okay. Yeah, right. I don't see the horse thing. That's wow. terrible. Yeah, That's terrible. Hit Clance. This is, uh, Clance sucks. Clance is bad. charlatan. You terrorist. Okay. <laughs> if Wishers Were Horses has swept it with three votes. Uh, I am going to look at a megaphone so we can get audience an audience vote up in here. Oh, that's a good idea for Hard oh. So we can tell them how wrong they are? <laughs> they can tell us how wrong yeah, it doesn't, are. It doesn't oh. matter if they vote against us or it's not. It's turning into a hoof. <laughs> We're still right. Always. Always. Oh, man. That was, that was sexual, but not sexy. Whoop. That's true. <laughs> are you trying <laughs> to save that gif? <laughs> yeah, you didn't mean to do that. Sure, Lawrence. Wait, wait there's like tracking. In, is this like a... The website's like, please don't steal my content. Wink. I'm like, what? <laughs> Ugh, every frame from between the beginning and the end yes. is horrifying. <laughs> is Horse dot gif? <laughs> All right. Can you... Oh, it's... <laughs> yes. That's so... Yes. <laughs> Ooh, gross. Now, Where do clothes go? Yeah, now add the Transformers sound yeah. effect to that. <laughs> just what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Bumblebee's back. <laughs> there it is. Is this in the Bumblebee trailer? Yeah. You know, horse lady? Know where he is. I want to zoom in, but it, you they, can't. Cha- they changed it. The old photo viewer had zoom in on these buttons, and now they're not on the <laughs> buttons anymore. All right, yeah. Carlos. Yeah, let's go. Settle down. That happened because my neck spasmed hey, out. Good podcast, everyone. Ow. We did it. Ow. You ever. Ow. I was so excited looking at that horse, my neck snapped. <sighs> All right, well, that's the end of the podcast. Yeah, that's the end of the podcast, everybody. That's why I got to do more yoga or less yoga. Eh. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, as Adam brightly plugged, we got Drunky 3 coming up. If you're watching this when it releases on Thursday, you better clear your weekend because uh, we're going to be killing ourselves for your amusement. That's and true. it would be a shame if you didn't see that. Yeah. Small part of ours. I mean, uh, we're going to be losing years off our life. Yeah, just so you know. That's what that's what binge drinking does. Not even a joke. Uh, one more thing, uh, we also have a first exclusive E3 wrap up every day. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we'll conclude the day's uh, E3 E3 aberrations with a hard hitting journalistic integrity segment where we discuss all of the game announcements in a very sober and responsible way. <laughs> yeah, right. So look forward to that. Uh, if you're watching live, you've already got a first membership. You guys are set. Uh, if you're not watching live, consider getting one. It's going to be fun. We'll go- we're going to be our drunkest during that sequence. So, <laughs> And there's a now a seven-day free trial. So if you haven't ever used a first membership before, the seven days will get you all the way through your E3 weekend. So recommend you get that to spend as much quality time with us as you can, your old drunk uncles and dads. I think out of all of us, I think all of us are uncles except Adam is the dad. I'm a dad. What? I yeah. Bruce is the dad. I'm an uncle. I'm no, not a dad. Bruce is cool uncle. He comes in on a hoverboard oh. wearing like reflective shades. Adam's the one you strive to get acceptance from and never do. You're married. I think I'm more like the dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're my transforming horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't gotten to that website yet. <laughs> yeah, all, right. all fours, and then your clothes vaporize. <laughs> 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 Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next week. If, uh, and if you're watching live, stay tuned for post show. If you're not watching live, maybe tra- check that out. Rishit.com slash something. Live. I mean, Funhouse. No, fun house. too, if you go to Funhouse. Oh, yeah. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. All right. But yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. So I was going to bounce next. off what Adam said was that uh, basically people have already made up their minds. You can't change people's opinions. I'm talking to the audience right now. If you have an opinion down, down and you want to try to convince someone, down. That your opinion is right and theirs is wrong. Don't. You're not going to accomplish anything. You're just going to sound like a fucking bitch. 